Does the music also come to your heart and prepare your heart? Je, nyimbo hizo zimekuja katika moyo wako, zikaandaa moyo wako? As uh, as we practice even more. Wacha tuendelee kufanya zoezi, kuendelea. God will also uh, use this team also to really prepare our heart uh, before we listen to the word. Anatubai kwamba Mungu ataweza kutumia hii team kuweza kuandaa mioyo yetu. even this morning I listened to Pastor Park's uh, Sunday morning service uh, in Korea. Ta asubuhi leo nilianza kusikiza mahubiri ya mchungaji Park uh, kule Korea. Uh, he was giving his testimony. Alikuwa anapeana ushuhuda wake. How uh, he really wanted to give offering kama jinsi ambavyo anataka kutoa sadaka because he was so thankful to the lord alikuwa anamoa shukrani sana mbele ya Mungu and but that time when he was young he didn't have any money to give offering lakini wakati ule alipokuwa mchanga hakuwa na pesa za kuweza kumpa Mungu and so that's why uh, he uh, I wanted to give his body for the work of the gospel. Alitaka kuweza kupeana mwili wake kwa ajili ya injili. And uh, fixing the house of the people. Na hata pia kuweza kujenga nyumba za watu. the gospel. Kuhubiri injili. And so he thought he's going to live all of his life in that way. Na hata pia akafikiria kwamba ataweza kuishi maisha yake yote namna hiyo. But now when he look back, lakini anapotazama nyuma, God has blessed his life so much and Mungu, that he is living the life that he has never imagined before. Mungu amebariki maisha yake zaidi na hata pia hakuwa anatarajia kwamba anaweza kaishi maisha ya namna hiyo. I believe that these are brothers and sisters who are uh, praising, who are playing the instruments and preparing for the speakers and uh, practicing all night. Uh, it seems like they are just doing it uh, uh, to just to sing. Hawa ndugu na hawa dada ambao wanaandaa stage, nyimbo, inaonekana kama kwamba tu wanaimba tu lakini sio kuimba. I can see that uh, I, I believe that God is also watching them. Ya naamini kwamba Mungu pia anawatazama. Because they have they are so thankful before God. Kwa sababu pia wanaoamua shukrani mbele za Mungu. They have nothing to give in return to God. Hawana kitu ya kuweza kumrejeshea Mungu. But they give their time. Lakini wanajipa muda wao. And they give their voice. Na hata pia kuweza kupeana sauti yao. And they give their instrument talents. Na hata pia kuweza kuimba, uh, kuimba kupitia vyombo vyao. And so I believe that God is also going to remember them as well. Naamini kwamba Mungu ataenda kuwakumbuka tena They may pia. not know right now. Ingawa hawezi jua sasa but 10 years to come lakini miaka 10 kuja 20 years to come miaka 20 kuja 30 years to come miaka 20 kuja like pastor park i believe that god is also going to give them the life that they could not even imagine before na hata pia mchungaji park anaamini kwamba mungu angaweza kuwapatia maisha ile ambayo hawakuwa natarajia i believe that this is the service unto god naamini kwamba hii ni ibada kwa mungu not before men sio mbele ya wanadamu not because i'm a christian uh, si kwa sababu mimi ni mkristo and not because i am religious that we are si here. Sababu, mimi ni mtu Today, not only me, all of us, and each and one of us, so we are standing before God. That's why I believe that all of you should come on time. Na ndio maana naamini kwamba kila mmoja wenu mnasali kuja kwa wakati unaofaa. Even starting from the praising we should participate together. Hata pia katika kuanzia kwa kusifu tunasali kuwa because pamoja. Because even praising is a is a service as well. Hata pia kusifu pia ni ibada. And even to pray together. Hata pia kuomba pamoja. Listen to the testimony together. Kusikiza ushuhuda pamoja. <coughs> and listen to the music together. Hata pia kusikiza nyimbo pamoja. Listen to the words together. Kusikiza neno pamoja. Give offering before God together. Hata pia kutoa sadaka no, we are doing all of this before God. Amen. Amen. And I believe that it is God who is watching us. God is also watching our hearts. And how we are coming to and attend this service as well. So, as I was talk, uh, thinking about this service, <laughs> this service is very important. Uh, we shouldn't be preparing for this uh, however. And so, starting from uh, this service, uh, we are also preparing with rehearsal. All these programs are uh, practiced and prepared. Na hata pia ibada hii imeandaliwa na mazoezi na maandalizi pia. Everyone, how is your chair that you are sitting? 
Je, kiti chako kiko namna gani unapoketi? Is it clean? Je, ni safi? Yes. Yesterday it was not clean. Uh, yeah. Last week it was not clean. Week iliyopita haikuwa safi. And so we were able to see as a people who are preparing for this service atuleza kuona kama watu ambao tunaandaa ibada hii and truly we we are just preparing for this service just before men ya tunaandaa ibada hii tu mbele ya wanadamu so even uh, cleaning the church so we double check hata pia kuweza kupanguza viti tuleza kuangalia zaidi yesterday until late in the evening we were cleaning the church siku ya jana na hata pia tulimekuwa tukipanguza viti we were cleaning the hall tulikuwa tunapanguza ukumbi huu cleaning every blade of those uh, luba windows right hata pia tulikuwa tunapanguza madirisha as we clean those things napos uh, panguza mambo vitu hivyo we didn't just clean hatukuwa tunasafisha tu we were cleaning preparing this service before god tulikuwa tunaandaa ibada hii mbele ya mungu and so we cleaned the church one time tuleza kupanguza kanisa tena but there were still the dust lakini bado kulikuwa na vumbi and so we changed the water to clean water and also clean the church again tulikuwa tunapambalisha maji na hata pia tunapanguza viti tena we were so thankful in our heart before god lakini tulikuwa na moyo shukrani mbele ya Mungu that we are able to prepare for this service before god kwa sababu tunaanza andaa ibada hii mbele ya Mungu that we can be used for this preparation of the service before god ili tuweze kutumika katika maandalizi hii mbele ya Mungu i was thankful Niweza kuwa na moyo shukrani. The choir members are you thankful? Je, wana kwaya mnao moyo shukrani? Only three people are thankful. Watu watatu ndio wanao moyo shukrani. Let us open to the word. Waacha tuweze kufungua <laughs> Biblia. Let us open the first Samuel. Tuweze kuangalia kitabu cha Samueli wa kwanza. 30, mlango wa 30 starting from verse 1 to 6. Kuanzia mstari wa kwanza hadi sita. First Samuel chapter 30 verse 1 Kitabu cha Samueli wa kwanza mlango wa 30 kuanzia mstari wa kwanza Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day and that the Amalekites had invaded the south and the Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive and the women and those who were there and from small to great and they did not kill anyone and but carried them away and went their way first three so david and his men and came to the city and there he was burned with fire and their wives their sons and their daughters had been taken captive then david and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep And David's two wives, Ainoam and Zezrites, and Abigail, and the widow of Nabal, and the Camerite, had been taken and captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. And but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Everyone, do you have problems? Je, kila mmoja mnazo shida? Raise your hand if you have problems. Inua mkono kama unao shida. All of you have problems. Aha, kila mmoja wenu mko na shida? Do you have difficulties? Je, unao magumu? You don't have any difficulties. Hauna magumu yoyote. Do you have grievances? Je, unao uzuni do you have sadness in your heart je unao uzuni katika moyo wako whenever we see the problems uh, that happen in our life uh, kila mmoja tunapoona shida zinazo uh, tunazo kupana nazo maishani mwetu uh, satan and tend to easily put the thought, thought inside of us shetani mara uh, mara moja uweza kuweka wazo ndani ya moyo wetu to make us uh, to believe that uh, problem is not good ya kuweza kutufanya tuweze kuamini kwamba shida sio nzuri and difficulty is not good magumu sio mazuri suffering is not good mateso sio mazuri these days as uh, i think about those things wakati huu ninapotafakari kuhusu mambo hayo uh, i remember the story of past exam apple uh, naweza kufikiria kuhusu hii hadithi ya past uh, exam apple Everyone, do you know that apple story 
Jenye mnajua hii hadithi ya hapo? Do you know that apple? Je, unajua hii hadithi ya hapo? You don't know. Haujui. It's good. Vyema. You should know. Hauhitaji kujua. So that I will tell you. Ili niweze kuelezea. Everyone in Japan. Ya, kila moja kule Japani. And there is a bay called Aomori Bay. Kuna kitu ambayo inaitwa Omol Abel. Amo Mabel. That sounds like Luo. Amo Babel. <laughs> Aomori Bay. <coughs> Amo Babel. Bay. Bay. No, this is English. Bay, Bay, B A Y. Aomori Bay. Aomori. <laughs> I'm so happy to be with Pastor Carson because he always brings a smile on our Sunday service, right? I gave up. <laughs> yes, there is Aomori Bay. Bay. <laughs> and there, there is a very famous uh, uh, agricultural product. Uh, and, uh, their apples are very delicious. Yeah, haya matunda ya ya apple ni mazuri, matamu sana. Um, but in 1991, lakini mwaka alifu moja miya tisa tisa ina moja, there was a big storm. Kulukua na mafriko mengi. And then, uh, two-third of the apples had just fallen on the ground. Na hata pia ha matunda ya apple ya likuwa ya meanguka chini. So these apples uh, that are fallen by this storm, it was not uh, in a quality for you to go and uh, sell as a product. Yeah, So imagine, you know, they consider agriculture like their babies. Yeah, They work for, you know, one whole year for this moment. Yeah, But then right before the harvest, all of these you know, apples have fallen. Lakini kabla ya mavuna, uh, matunda haya apo yote ya nanguka. And these uh, farmers, uh, there were much, you know, grievances and sadness and difficulties in their hearts. Hata pia hawa wakulima walikuwa katika mashaka na hata pia magumu katika moyoni mwao. Why at this time? Ya, kwa nini wakati huu? The storms have come and what? destroy, you know, our apple trees. Na hata pia mafrika mekuja na hata pia meangamiza, maribu meetu ya apple. They were crying. Walikuwa nalia. They were crying. And they were so worried about that one year that they have to now survive with only one third of the production that had to remain on the tree. They really didn't know what to do. And all these farmers at Aomori, they were crying and crying. And that whole village of Aomori, it was covered with the grievances and sadness. Na hiyo, kijijichote, kilikuwa kimezao na, machu, na machungu na kilio. About a week has passed. Lakini wiki moja, ikapita. Eh, and one farmer, he stood up and said, Na mkulima moja, kasimama kasema. Hey, my friends. Hey, nyi, wa, mara, rafiki. My, my, my colleagues. Hey, nyi, wa, wenzangu. Right now, all of these apples have fallen down. But just because so we are sad and crying for these apples, these apples are not going to come out of the tree again. We got a you know, gather ourselves together and think about how we are going to solve this problem. So these uh, farmers, you know, they wiped their tears and they gathered together and they began to discuss together. <laughs> how are we going to come out of this problem? How are we going to solve these difficulties that is facing us right now? And then they came up with an idea. Let us put a sticker on the apple. What? Nini? Sticker on the apple? Yeah, he sticker kwenye apple. What kind of sticker? Sticker na mlagani. And during the time, it mm. was the season for KCSC. Na wakati huo ilikuwa ni wakati wa mtiani wa KCSC. So let us put a sticker. Saying that this is a lucky apple. And if you eat this apple, you'll be so lucky. And you will pass the exam. So 
they couldn't some people they you know didn't agree with it hata watu wengine hawakuweza kukubaliana some people they agree with the idea wengine hawakuweza kukubaliana na ile they all decided to put a sticker on the apple na wengine wakaamua kuweka hii sticker kwenye apples like that namna hivyo on the apple kwenye ile apple there is a sticker kuna sticker in japanese saying past exam ya maanisha kwamba kupita mtihani if you eat this apple ukaweza kula hii tunda la apple if you buy this apple to your children and they eat this apple then they will be lucky enough to pass the exam hata watoto wako waweza kukula hili tunda la apple wataweza kupita mtihani and they raise the price of this apple na hata pia wakaweza kuongeza bei ya hii apple 10 times mara 10 In Kenya how much is an apple? Je, uh, Kenya inchi ya Kenya apple ni shilingi gapi? 30 bob. Shilingi 35. 10 times more expensive. Ni zai... One apple is then 300 shillings, ndio? Apple moja kama shilingi 300. Fathers, baba. Would you buy a lucky apple to your children who are sitting for the exam for KCSE so that you wish them a luck of a passing the exam paying 300 shilling for a apple uteza kuwanunulia watoto wako apple ya shilingi 300 father raise your hand if you will buy that apple baba inua mkono kama utaweza kununua or maybe there are no fathers here right now kwa hivyo hakuna baba hapa sasa i only see like four five hands naona tu kama watu wanne watano what about mothers would you buy this lucky apple to your children and say Good luck on your exam. Je, utanunua hili apple? Each uh, apple is 300 shilling. Moja <coughs> shilingi Raise your hand. Inua mkono. Where are all the mothers? Wakina mama wako wapi? Usually when I ask this question, uh, mara mingi ninapouliza hili swali. Almost all mothers they raise their hand. Uh, mara nyingi wa mama wote inua mkono. Usually fathers they don't raise their hand. Yaani akina baba wainui mkono. Everyone kila moja they put that sticker waliweza kuweka hiyo sticker and then they sold 10 times more expensive na wakaweza kuiuza mara 10 zaidi and on that year na katika huo mwaka only with one third of the harvest that is remaining on the tree na ile nusu ambayo ileweza kubaki kwenye mti they were able to make three times more profit than the normal season only with one third of the production waliweza kupata faida zaidi Uh, kuli, uh, kuliko ile ya kawaida they earned even more money wakaweza kupata hela nyingi and then the normal season that they had apples na kila season ambayo walikuwa na apples everyone <coughs> kila mmoja until today mpaka leo since 1991 kuanzia mwaka 1991 apples from our mori bay is considered as a lucky apple na hata pia apple hiyo imeweza kuonekana kuwa apple ambao ni afanaka being sold 10 times more expensive inauzwa mara kumi zaidi and now those people in our mori you know they are very rich people na hawa watu wa imagine, right? sana wanaweza tafakari mambo hayo everyone was that storm bad or was that storm good je yeah, maafrika ilikuwa ni nzuri ama ilikuwa ni mbaya it was good right You wish that storm also came to you too, right? Na hitaji pia hiyo mafariko ikuje katika maisha yako. Everyone there are problems and difficulties in our life. Kuna shida na matatizo katika maisha yetu. But Satan easily, you know, put the thought inside of us to believe and that this problem is bad. Lakini shetani anaweka wazo ndani mwetu kufikia kwamba tatizo hili ni mbaya. This difficulty is bad. Hii magumu ni mbaya. That's how people, you know, Satan put that kind of thought inside of us. Aha, ndio mawazo ambayo shetani anaweka ndani mwetu. But then the blessed people, lakini watu ambao wamebarikiwa, who are the blessed people? Watu ambao wamebarikiwa na watu wa namna gani? Those gaza. who are able to see the works of God in the problems. Ni wale watu ambao wanaweza ona kazi ya Mungu katika matatizo. Yes, so those are people who are able to see the works of God in the midst of problems, in the midst of sadness, in the midst of difficulties they are the blessed people ya yeah, wale watu ambao wanaona kazi ya Mungu katika matatizo hao ndio watu ambao wamebarikiwa many of us are seated here today sisi sote tumeweza kiti mali hapa and i believe that there is not even a single person who doesn't have any difficulties who doesn't have any you know, sadness in your hearts naamini kwamba hakuna mtu yote ambaye hana machungu ambaye hana tatizo katika maisha yake but why don't you ask yourself a question mbona usiweze kujiuliza swali am i seeing god in the problem je ninamuona Mungu katika hiyo shida Am I right now seeing God inside my sadness? Ama naona Mungu katika magumu yangu. 
Now, about three years ago, there was a first pastor's transfer. For last seven years, uh, I lived as an assistant pastor here in Kenya. But this time, there was a transfer, and I was transferred from B building to A building here. Yes. I was an assistant pastor. Life is tired, right? <laughs> and I was transferred as a senior pastor here. When I was an assistant pastor, I didn't have to worry about the preaching during Sunday morning service. <laughs> Pastor Kim would preach in English. Yeah, Kim katika so I would just uh, you know, check here and there for the ser service. Mimi hapa na pale there was nothing much for me to worry about. <laughs> but after becoming a uh, senior pastor, after the first Sunday service, baada, baada, many people came to me saying, Pastor, I want to have fellowship with you. At first, I couldn't get used to that. Why are these people coming to me? Oh, what do you want to fellowship with me? Why would you want to have fellowship with me? I was so scared. And when they come, and when I hear from them, there was not even a single person who was coming with the good news. Pastor, thank you so much for praying for me. Pastor, I came to let you know that I passed the exam. You know, when they pass the exam or when their children pass the exam, nobody comes to me. They, they, after service, morning service, they all go to KFC and eat chicken. <laughs> So usually when, when you see a sister with their son or daughter in my office is because either they drop out from school or they fail the exam or because they don't have a school fee. Karo? Karo? Sister Karo. Karo ya shule. Even you understand, right? Jia kila moja mwelewa. Uh, Pastor, um, I am difficult. Uh, now, magum. What does your difficult has to Je, do magumi with me? Yako, na mimi na gani? At first, I couldn't get used to it. Yeah, si I couldn't understand why people are coming to me. Yeah, si kwa nini watu Not only that, Isio hiyo peke yake. that was high school, pia na shule, GBS, ya, ya upili, the church, EBS, and all these matters. Before, it was not my problem. But now it became my problem. The GBS is about to go bankrupt. High school is about to go bankrupt. High school and bankrupt. Also church, no money. All these things became a big burden inside of my heart. To tell you the truth, some brothers and sisters, they come because of a debt problem. That Ah, oh, what is your difficulties? I have a debt. Now, Denny. But I don't know how to solve this problem. Ah, si oh, really? Ah, kika. How much is your debt? Thirty thousand. Elf salasimi. I'm sorry. Asamahani. Are you joking? <laughs> because I, I also live in debt. Millions and millions of Kenya shillings. So that became a very big burden in my heart. So I didn't want to come back to Nairobi Church. On that Sunday, for the evening service, I went to Kimahuri. Everyone, do you know Kimahuri? You don't know. Yes, that is Elder Phillips' hometown. We have a church over there. And after preaching the word over there, as I was coming back, 
I really did not want to come to Nairobi church. Hakika sikutaka kurejea katika kanisa la Nairobi. Because Nairobi church is a big problem. Ya yeah, Nairobi iko na shida kubwa kabisa. So instead of coming, badala ya kuweza kurejea, oh, it was also very late in the evening. Ilikuwa imepita masaa. So I came from Nyeri to uh, Kimahuri to Nyeri. Nilitoka katika kanisa la Kimahuri nikakuja kanisa la Kimahuri. And I called Pastor Steve Steve. Pastor Steve, right now it's too late. I don't want to continue with my journey. Can you look for me on hotel? So he got me a room and I stayed there. <laughs> and then I put my face on the pillow. God, God. When did I say that I wanted to become a senior pastor of Nairobi Church? Why is there so much problem? Why do you put me in this kind of situation? This is a problem. This is a problem. Brothers and sisters, they have this problem and this problem and this problem. What am I supposed to do? I began to cry. I began to yell at God. I began to curse at God. I began to pour up my heart before God. And then I got tired and I slept. In the morning I woke up as I was reading the Bible. God, he showed me the word in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. If you have to open the Bible, it means you got some problem, right? I spoke about this so many times. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 uh, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. What? God you're Mungu. telling me to rejoice? He was repeating himself two times. Rejoice in the Lord always again. Bwana. I will say rejoice. Tena nasema fraini. Everyone, when does when do you repeat the same thing two times? Je, ni wakati gani ambapo unarejea mambo mara mbili? When you speak about something important, you mention it two times, three times, four times, right? Unapozungumza kitu cha muhimu unarudia mara ya kwanza, mara ya pili, mara ya tatu. So God he was telling me rejoice. Mungu alikuwa ananiambia fry. And not only rejoice so when I feel like I'm rejoicing. Si kwamba wakati ninapohisi kwamba na fry. He was telling me to rejoice always. Alikuwa ananiambia ni fry siku zote. What does he mean by rejoicing always? Je, ina maana nini kuweza ku fry siku zote? You rejoice so when you are able to rejoice. Je, unaweza ku fry wakati unataka ku fry. Always means so when you cannot Rejoice, so you also gotta rejoice as well. Uh, kila wakati na manisha wakati ambapo kwamba hata utaku fry una fry. So, uh, you know what, God, I can't do it like Philippians chapter four verse four. Yeah, so when you fanya kitu katika Filipo mlango wa nemsa. Right now I'm so difficult. How can I rejoice? Sasa na magumu na za fry namna gani? God, He was telling me. Mungu alikuwa na niambia. But still rejoice. Yeah, but still fry. Remember when you were in Korea? Ebu fikiria wakati ulipo kwa katika inchi ya Korea. Pastor Park, he also received this word. Ata pia mchungaji Park alipoka elinene. Pastor Park, when I told him to rejoice in the midst of problems that he was in, he also rejoiced like this. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. That is so silly, right? Because God told you to rejoice, you're like, ha, ha, ha. You know, you're not rejoicing at all in your heart, but you're like, ha, ha, ha. When I gave this word to Pastor Park, you know, he rejoiced like that. How come you can't rejoice? <laughs> Alright, God, if that is how to rejoice, then I can do it. Since you told me to rejoice, I will rejoice. I also said, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. After having fellowship with God through the word in that way I got in my car and then I returned to Nairobi on the way I received a phone call and it was a sister who was in charge of this one department and she called me and she told me pastor you know the problem that we had it's so 
solved. Oh, I was so joyful and happy inside of my heart. Although not all the problems were solved. I have so many problems, so one of them was solved. But I was so thankful to experience that word in my life. The word told me to rejoice. In my heart, I wasn't rejoicing at all. But because the daddy told me to rejoice, I just laughed and rejoiced. Ha ha ha! And truly, God has changed all the situations so that I can truly rejoice in my heart. Ah, this is how you have to believe in the word. Ah, first, I should receive the word in my heart. That's what I was able to learn inside of my heart. I couldn't understand why God was telling me to rejoice. The word him telling me to rejoice did not match with my heart. I wasn't rejoicing in my heart at all. But I received the word the way it is. And I saw that word working inside of my life. Recently there was also electricity problems. And because of that my heart was very difficult. Wow, how can we you know, handle this electricity bill. In the midst of the problem, God has given me the word again. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. It's over there, right? Should we read it all together? <laughs> Ready, go. It says, a call unto me. This is a New King James Version that is King James Version. It says, a call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. What God? You are telling me to call upon you? Then you said, I will answer you. You will answer me? God, you're not a liar, right? If I call upon you and you say you will answer, and you are not going to just say, just kidding. Yeah, all right, then I'll call upon you. And I believed that then you will answer me. Truly, I called upon him. And he answered me and solved all the problems that I had. And also, recently I had also difficulties in my heart. But again, I have a problem. I have difficulties. I don't know what to do with this problem. What am I supposed to do? In the midst of the problem, God has given me the word again. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. In my heart, I didn't have any strength. I didn't have any power. I was so exhausted. I was tired. But that moment, inside of that problem, God has given me the word. Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. Should we read it all together? Ready, go. It But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. God, Mungu, if I wait upon you, then you are going to renew my strength? Once again, I ask him, God, you're not a liar, right? You're not joking with me, right? If I wait upon you, then you are going to renew my strength, right? You are going to give me the new strength, right? And they say, yes. 
ndiyo. Last time you believe in that word in the book of Jeremiah chapter 33 and then I answered you. Yeah, niweza kujibu katika ile kitabu cha Jeremiah 33. Last time you believe in the word in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 and I answered you. Yeah, uliamini kifo wa Filipo mlango wa 4 mstari wa 4 na nikakujibu. This time why don't you also believe in the word I will also answer you. Hata wakati huu mbona usiamini na wangu na nitaweza kukujibu. Wait upon me and I will renew your strength. Yeah, niitie jina langu na mimi nitakupa nguvu mpya. And I am waiting upon the Lord. Each and every day. Yes, at times there are times that I also still lose my strength. But when I wait upon the Lord again, God he new renews my strength. Everyone who are the blessed people. There is no one who doesn't have any problem who are seated here. All of us we have a problem. All of us in one way or the other we have a sadness and grievances in our heart. But before the problem Now people divide into two different types of people. Yeah, kuna gawanyika, kuna mgawanyiko wa watu aina mbili katika njia mbili. One, moja are the people who are able to find God in the problem. Ah, kwanza ni wale ambao wanampata Mungu katika shida. The other, lakini mwingine are the people ni mtu who are only indulged into the problem. Ni wale ambao wanaingia tu katika shida. They cannot find anything other than the problem. Hawezi kuona Mungu katika ile shida katika hali. In the midst hali. of the grievances and sadness that they only find the reason for you to be sad. Ya yeah, katika hiyo kuchoshwa na hata pia uh, But in the midst of the sadness so you don't find God in the sadness. Na hata pia katika huo huzuni hawezi kupata Mungu. Sometimes so we are in hopeless hata pia wakati mwingine tunakuwa na kuchoshwa but in the hopelessness kutokuwa na tumaini there are people who find god in the hopelessness na wale ambao wanampata mungu katika ndani ya kutokuwa na tumaini and there are people who doesn't find god in the hopelessness lakini kuna watu ambao hawezi kumpata mungu kutokuwa na tumaini who are true christians lakini wa kristo wa ukweli ni gani the true christians wa kristo wa ukweli ni ought to be able to find god in the midst of the problems ni wale ambao wanaompata mungu katika In the midst of the grievances. Ndani ya machungu. In the midst of sadness. Ndani ya machungu. Here right now we read the word about David and Ziklag. Yeah, tumeweza hapa tumeweza kusoma Daudi na Ziklag. David he was sick and tired of running away from King Saul. Yeah, Daudi alikuwa amechoshwa kumkimbia kutoka kwa Sauli. So he wanted to be a little bit more comfortable. Mara alitaka pia kuweza kuwa So He decided to go behind the enemy's line. Aliweza kwenda nyume na line ya adui zake. Who are the Philistines? Wale ambao ni wa Filisti. The Philistines. Hawa Filisti are the enemies. Hawa ni maadui. So he feared the uh, Philistines so much. Aliwaogopa hawa Filisti wa Filisti sana. But David, lakini Daudi, he decided to enter into the territory of the Philistines. Aliamua kuingia katika territory ya hawa Filisti. Because if he enter into the territory of the Philistines, kwa sababu akiingia katika hii territory ambayo ni wa Filisti, King Saul because he is so fearful of the Philistines, he wouldn't be able to chase after David all the way behind the enemy's line. Yeah, kwa sababu huyo uh, Sauli alikuwa ameogopa ameogopa wa Filisti angeweza kuendelea kumkimbiza so, huyo Daudi. David went to the king of the Philistine. Na hata huyo Daudi akaenda katika mfalme wa Filisti. And then the king has given David a land inside the territory of the Philistine called Ziklag. Na hata pia huyo mfalme akaweza kumpatia huyo Daudi uh, shamba kipande cha shamba katika mji wa Ziklag. On the side of the Philistine the king he was so happy. Ya ndani wa Filisti alikuwa na furaha sana. Why was he happy? Mbona alikuwa na furaha? Because kwa sababu all this time he wanted to attack Israel. Huo muda wote alitaka kuweza kupigana na Waisraeli. But he couldn't attack Israel because David was there. Kwa sababu angeweza kupigana na Waisraeli kwa sababu Daudi alikuwa pale. They knew that as long as David is with Israel. Ya yeah, aliweza kujua kwamba wakati Daudi yako na Israeli. If they attack Israel. Wakiweza kwa, kwa, kwa kupigana na Israeli. They knew that they are going to lose. Walijua kwamba ataweza kupoteza. So Philistines they had the many chariots and a strong army. Na Filisti walikuwa na uh, Farasi na Because of David they cannot fight against the Israel. Kwa sababu ya Daudi wangeweza 
kupigana na Waisraeli. But if David is living in Ziklag, lakini Daudi kama ametoka katika anaishi Ziklag, you know one thing for sure. Unajua kitu kimoja kwa hakika. David is not with Israel. Daudi hayuko pamoja na Israeli. So about a year later, lakini baada ya mwaka, now the Philistine she wanted to go and attack King Saul. Hawa wa Filisti walitaka kwenda kupigana na huyu mfalme Sauli. David came to the king of the Philistines. Na Daudi akakuja kwa mfalme wa Filisti. Yes, the king of Philistines. Ah, mfalme wa Filisti. For close to one year you've been protecting us. Ya kwa muda wa mwaka mmoja umekuwa ukitulinda. We are like a brothers. Sasa sisi ni kama wandugu. I want to fight on your side. Nataka niweze kupigana upande wako. I want to help you. Nataka niweze kukusaidia. The king was very happy. Ah, huyu mfalme aliweza kufurahi. All right, let's go to the battle against Israel together. Ah, Ah, katika vita pamoja. But lakini the generals of the army next to the king of the Philistines that they disagreed. Ah, wa, wa, ku, wa Filisti waleza, awakweza kuelewana. His majesty. Ah, mfalme. If we go to the battlefield with David, tukienda vitani pamoja na Daudi, and there are their blood. Yeah, hiyo ni yeye ni damu yao. They're the families. Yeye ule ni familia yao. In the middle of in the middle of the fight, katikati ya vita, David is going to turn against us. Daudi ataweza kutugeuka. And David is the one that is going to fight against us. Na Daudi ndiye atakayepata kutupiga. So the king he thought about it. Kwa hivyo mfalme akaza kufikiria. Yeah, that could be also true. Ah, inaweza kuonekana ni kweli. So he told David. Akaza kumwambia Daudi. If it is time we cannot go with you. Wakati huu hatuwezi kwenda pamoja nawe. Why don't you remain behind? Mbona usibaki nyuma? Return to Ziklag. Eh, rejea katika mji wa Ziklag. And so he, he really wanted to fight. Hakika alitaka kupigana, but with a reject he returned to Ziklag. Lakini kwa kukataliwa aliweza kurejea katika mji wa Ziklag. But when he returned to Ziklag, aliporejea Ziklag He was so surprised. Aliweza kushangaa zoa kabisa. The whole city of Ziklag was on fire. Mji wote wa Ziklag ulikuwa umejaa na moto. And all the valuables were stolen. Na vitu ambavyo vya dhamani vilikuwa vimeibiwa. And not only that even the wives and the children they were all taken as a captive. Na si hivyo peke yake hata mke pamoja na watoto walikuwa wamechukuliwa. All the soldiers and the David they just collapsed on the on the ground. Na hata pia ile jeshi ambayo ilikuwa pamoja na Daudi wote waliweza kuangukia. God. Ah Bwana. I thought you are going to protect us. Unajua kwamba utaweza kutulinda. Why are you giving us difficulties in our lives? Mbona unatupatia magumu katika maisha yetu? Why are you adding sadness onto our lives? Mbona unaongoza magumu katika maisha yetu? Why are you giving grievances onto our lives? Mbona unatupatia machungu katika maisha yetu? just collapsed on the ground and they began to cry and cry and cry. Waliweza kuanguka na hata pia kuanza kulia na kulia na kulia. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 4. Katika kitabu cha Samueli wa kwanza mlango wa 30 msalo wa 4. It says then and David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Yeah. Everyone, kila mmoja, have you ever cried until you had no more power to weep? Je, ushailia mpako kawa kwamba hauna nguvu ya kulia tena? Raise your hand if you experienced that before. Hebu inua mkono wako kama ushai hizi namna hivyo. Couple of people, uh, watu wachache. I don't know. For me personally, uh, mimi mwenyewe, yes, sir, there are times that I had cried also a lot. Kuna wakati nishailia zaidi. But I can't really say, you know, I cried until I had no more power to cry. So I don't know how this feels like. Yeah, mimi sijui hii ina ina issue gani. They must have cried a lot. Lakini inamaanisha kwamba walikuwa wamelia sana. No, do you want to cry now tears doesn't even come out anymore. Ijapo kwa kwamba hata unalia lakini machozi haitoki tena. So they are so sad and so difficult. Walikuwa na huzuni na hata pia ugumu. And in such a difficult situation. Na katika hali ngumu kama hiyo, David, Daudi. David, Daudi. At first he could not find God in the problem. Hakuweza kumuona Mungu katika hiyo shida. But a little bit later, lakini baadaye, as he was crying and crying, alipokuwa kilia na kulia, he began to look around. Aliweza kuangalia chini. And then he found something so strange. Na akaona jambo la kustaajabu. What is strange right now? 
Je, jambo la kustajabu ni gani? We read 1 Samuel chapter 30 from verse 1 to 6. Ya yeah, tumeweza kusoma katika kitabu cha Samueli wa kwanza mlango wa 30 msara wa 36. What is so strange? Je, jambo gani la kustajabu hapo? What is strange? Je, jambo gani la kustajabu? <coughs> Something strange is there. Jambo la kustajabu liko hapo. From verse 1 to 6. Kuanzia mstari wa kwanza hadi wa 6. Is there anyone who can find what is strange from kuna, this? Kuna verses? mtu yote ambaye anaweza anaweza pata what do you find strange from wapo? verse 1 to 6? Nothing. Akuna. What do you find strange from verse 1 to 6? Je, unapata nini hapo jambo la kustajabu hapo? Something so strange is there. Kuna jambo la kustajabu hapo. They spoke about stoning him. They spoke about stoning him. So that sounds very strange to you. Brother Michael, and what Michael. seems so, so strange from verse 1 to, one to 6? I'm not getting now. I'm not quite sure now. No, you're not sure. How about you? Um, David was greatly distressed for the people who spoke to Okay. What is strange from verse 1 to 6? Think, uh, David was able to find some strength. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Anyone who has the answer to this, what is strange from verse 1 to 6? Everyone, let me tell you. <laughs> right now, Amalekites came and destroyed the whole city of Ziklag. Burned all the houses. But you know what? There was no one who was lying dead on the ground. Right now, all strong men, they went out to the battle, right? And then by the king of the Philistines, they couldn't fight in the battle and they were just coming back. So who are the ones that, that remained in Ziklag? Women. Elderlies, children, Watoto. they're the ones who remain behind. If you're the boss of the Amalek, Kama wewe ndiyo, um, kuu wa Maleki, now you steal all the gold from Ziklag, right? Alafu nabeba kila kitu you steal mjua all Ziklag. the weapons from the Ziklag, right? Kila kitu mjua Ziklag. You steal all the valuable things, and then you carry the people as a captive. Alafu watu kama mateka. And then as you try to take people as a captive, there will be elderly ones. Hey, you Amalekites! You cannot take our children! There will be stubborn elderlies, right? If you're the boss, what would you do with them? I would fight until I die. Oh, you're very generous. <laughs> What would you do with those people who is like holding you back and bothering you from doing your work? I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight. For me, I will fight. For me, I will kill them. Mimi ni tawaua. What? Nini? You go against me? Nini? Wewe unenda kinyuma na mimi? Pull out the sword. Toa upanga. And the elderly people. You kill. The young babies, you kill. <coughs> and then you will only take whom as a captive? Those who are useful for the army of Amalek. And when you carry the elderly, <coughs> the elderly, they walk slow and they get tired very quickly <coughs> because they are weak, right? They are coming behind and they are following you. Pole pole, they fall all the way behind. Hey, you old people, come quickly. And then you have to wait for them. The babies are crying. If you are the boss, so you want to take those kind of children and babies and those elderly? 
And out of the ladies that are strong and the ladies who will go against you, right? Na hata pia kuna wadada wale ambao ni wako na nguvu wanaenda kinyume na wewe. Those people you would even slaughter them and kill them. Wao tutaweza kuwaua na kuangamiza. This is a battle. This is a battle. Hii ni vita. You understand, right? Je, waelewa? But lakini why don't you read verse 2? Mbona usome mstari wa pili? Chapter 30 verse 2. Mlango wa 30 mstari wa pili. It says and had taken the women captives and that were therein. They slew not any either great or small but carried them away and went on their way. What is strange about this battle? Je, ni nini jambo la kustaajabu katika vita hii? This is a battle. Hii ni vita. Even in the battle, katika vita, is a very cruel. Ni jambo ni jambo la You don't care about your opponents. Haujali kuhusu mwanzako. You don't care about your age. Haujali kuhusu miaka yako. She hinders you then you are dead. Ya, kisa kucheza umekufa. Even is that right or not? Je, kila mtu sivyo? During the time they use the sword, right? Wanatumia wakati wanatumia upanga sio? We use the rifle, right? Wakati tunatumia rifle. And then everybody on your way. Boom, yeah, boom, 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 you kill, yeah. right? Why? Because if you don't kill that enemy, then that enemy is going to wake up and shoot against you. Even that is a war. The war is so cruel. It's so bad. They don't care about you. If they don't kill you, then they are going to kill you. But lakini in such a battle katika vita kama hivi David he was so surprised Daudi aliweza kustaajabu He was so grieved Aliweza kuwa na uchungu He was so sad Alikuwa na uchungu And he was crying Alikuwa analia But lakini he looked around Akaweza kuangalia Oh eh I've been to many battles. Nimekuwa katika vita vingi. Every battle that I went. Na kila vita ambayo nimeweza kwenda. Before you run away, you know useless people, you kill all of them and then run away with the useful people. Unatoroka na watu wala watu ambao hawatumiki na waua na unaenda na wala ambao wanaweza kutumika. There is not even a single person who is dead lying on the ground. Yeah, sijaona mtu hata ambaye ameweza kulala kwenye kifo. Wow, sikafu. God is helping us. Ah, Mungu anatusaidia. Wow, God has protected them. Ah, Mungu anatulinda. Wow, God is keeping us. Ah, Mungu anatusaidia. In verse 6 He was encouraged by the Lord. Is that right? Yes, how was he encouraged? In the midst of the grievances and the sadness and the problem katikati ya magumu na matatizo the helping works of god aliweza kuona msaada wa mungu right now the house is burning down ingawa nyumba sasa inachomeka and she lost his wives na hata pia amepoteza wake zake he lost his children amepoteza watoto and all of his valuables are stolen na vitu ambavyo vya dhamani vimeweza kuibiwa but in such a middle of a grievances and sadness and difficulties lakini katikati ya shida na matatizo David, Daudi, he found the works of God. Aliweza kuwa na kazi ya Mungu. Verse 30 uh, verse 6 he says, "But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God." Lakini msali wa 6 anasema Daudi akajitia moyo katika Bwana. Even how was he be strengthened? Je, aliweza kujitia moyo namna gani? In the middle of that situation where your wives are taken as a captive. Katikati ya hali wake zako wamechukuliwa. Where your loving daughters and your sons are taken as a captive. Mali watoto wako wamechukuliwa wamefanya kuwa wametekwa wamefanya matekwa. Even in the normal condition. Katika hali ya kawaida. You gotta be so sad. Utaweza kuwa na uzuni. Continue to cry. Unalia. Just throw the ashes on yourself. Hata pia unafanya mambo fulani got to be in grievances utaweza kuwa na uchungu got to be in sadness utaweza kuwa na uchungu but david lakini daudi now david strengthen himself in the lord his god akaweza kujitia moyo katika bwana was he able to strengthen himself aliweza kujitia moyo ndani ya bwana in the midst of a, such a darkness a, such a grievances and such a big problem that he's facing katikati ya matatizo because kwa sababu he found aliweza kupata god God's work. God working in the midst of the problems. Mungu akifanya kazi katikati ya shida. Ah surely God is with me. Ah hakika kweli Mungu yuko pamoja nami. Surely God is working. Hakika Mungu anafanya kazi. When he found that. Alipotambua jambo hilo. He was able to strengthen in himself. 
aliweza kujitia moyo Everyone, don't you have also problems je kila moja hauna shida don't you have that issues je hauna matatizo ya deni don't you have financial problems je hauna shida ya fedha don't you have a problem with your husband and wife je hauna shida kati ya mume wako na mke wako don't you have a problem at your workplace je hauna shida katika katika kazi yako everyone why don't you also turn your eyes to the lord mbona usiweze kumgeukia bwana and try to find the works of god in the problem na kuweza kupata kazi ya Mungu katika hiyo shida. Then when you find his works in the problem. Na ukaweza kupata kazi ya Mungu katika hiyo shida. Even like this David you can also be strengthened and able to rise and go and chase after Amalekites. Kama Daudi utaweza kujitia moyo na kuenda kuwakimbiza Amaleki. You be so happy once again. Utaweza kuwa na moyo furaha tena. You gain joy once again in your heart. Utaweza kufurahia tena ndani ya moyo wako. There are problems. Yeah, katika hiyo shida. But there are also protection and the helping hands of God in my life. Kunayo pia ulinzi na hata pia mkono wa Bwana katika shida. If you are true Christians, kama wewe ni Mkristo wa ukweli. If you believe in God, kama unamwamini Mungu, one thing got to be different. Ah kunayo jambo ambalo ni tofauti. What is that? Hiyo ni nini? in the midst of our problems katikati ya shida in the midst of grievances nda katikati ya majonzi you ought to be able to find the works of god in the problem utaweza kupata kazi ya mungu katikati ya hiyo shida joseph yusufu he received a dream aliweza kupokea ndoto that you be the overseer of egypt wewe utakuwa governor wa katika nchi ya misri and but he was taken as a captive lakini aliweza kushikwa tu kama he was sold as a slave aliweza kuuzwa kama mfungwa mtumwa i'm going to be a governor je unamaanisha na magani mimi nitakuwa governor that dream was just a nonsense ah hiyo ndoto ilikuwa tu ni kitu bure god why are you giving me such kind of problems and difficulties mungu mbona unanipatia magumu kama haya na shida kama hii giving me these sufferings mbona unanipatia mateso kama haya now he is falsely accused yeah nimeweza kushtakiwa bure and put into prison nimewekwa gerezani god why are you doing this to me mungu mbona unanifanyia mambo kama haya why are you sending me to prison for what i have not done katika mambo ambayo sijafanya god what are what have i done wrong to you Mungu nimekukosea nini? That you are giving me these grievances in my life. Unanipatia magumu haya katika maisha yangu. But in the midst of that grievances. Lakini katikati ya magumu, he was able to find the works of God. Aliweza kuona kazi ya Mungu. Genesis chapter 50. Ah uh, kitabu cha mwanzo mlango wa 15. Let's see how he finds the work of God in his life. Wacha tuone jinsi ambavyo anapata kuona kazi ya Mungu katika maisha yake. Genesis chapter 50 he confesses like this before his brothers. Ana kiri hivi mbele ya ndugu zake. And verse 20 msai wa 20 Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 Kitabu cha mwanzo mlango wa 50 msari wa 20 But as for you you meant evil against me but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive Brothers wandugu you meant evil against me <laughs> but God meant it for good. Lakini Mungu aliyafanya kuwa mema kwangu. Everyone in the midst of a brother's evil against him. Ah katikati ya ndugu katika uovu ambao alikuwa amemfanyia. In the midst. Katikati. In the middle of. Katikati ya evil of the brothers against him. Uovu wa ndugu wake kinyume na yeye. He found the goodness of god his works in his life aliweza kuona uwema wa mungu na kazi ya mungu ikifanyika katika maisha yake god ah mungu you used these brothers ah unatumia hawa ndugu you used my brothers unatumia ndugu zangu to do evil against me kunifanyia uovu ubaya to train me yeah kuweza kuniuza to teach me how to rely on you kuweza kunifunza jinsi ya kuweza kukutegemea to teach me the spiritual life kunifunza maisha ya rohoni and eventually to make me as a governor of Egypt na kunifanya kuwa governor katika nchi ya Misri oh god you wanted to use my brothers ah mungu anataka kutumia ndugu zangu to be evil against me wa waovu kinyume na mimi it wasn't the brothers kama sio ndugu zake it was god who meant evil through my brothers against me so that you may reveal your goodness against me ya ni bwana ndiye aliweza kufanya maovu hayo ili aweze kudhihirisha wema wake juu yangu 
brothers, you meant evil against me, right? But I was able to see the goodness of God in the works. In the midst of the grievances. In the midst of a brother's evil. The man of God, Joseph, again found the works of God. Everyone who are blessed people. Those who doesn't have any problem. I'm telling you, even if you become a billionaire, you will have a problem. Blessed people are not those people who doesn't have any problem. Blessed people are those people who are able to find God in the problem. <laughs> Since we are in Genesis, we can open to Genesis 35. It talks about another man of God. <coughs> Jacob. Yakobo. Had two wives. Leah and Rachel. She loved Rachel so much. But she was a barren. But by the grace of God, she like, received a child. And now, as she was giving birth to a son, verse 35, verse 1. 18. It says, and so it was as her soul was departing, for she died that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. <laughs> Here, what is he saying? Rachel. As she was giving birth to a son. When she looked at the situation, situation was like Benoni. What does it mean by the name Benoni? Son of sadness. She was a barren. And by the grace of God, she was giving birth to a son. But to her, she, that was not a joy or a happiness. Why? Why? Because she couldn't find the works of God in that problem. That's why she dies. She gives the name of that son Benoni. The son of sadness. The son of a problem. The son of grievances. Uh, the situation that I'm in. The situation that I am in right now. Uh, truly, this is, uh, situation is a son of sadness. This problem is a son of a problem. Why do you name it like that? Because you don't find God in that son. But then the man of God, Jacob, found God in that, in that son. Found God in that problem. And then he said, no, 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 no. His name cannot be Benoni. His name is Benjamin. That's what he says, right? And that she called his name ben Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. In him, he saw the work of God. He saw God in, in him. His name is not Benoni, his name is Benjamin. What does that mean? Benjamin, Benjamin means son of my right hand. God is going to use him. God will use him as a very important right hand. God will exalt him. He has hope. He has joy. God will use him. Say my amen. Say my amen. Even those are people who are able to find God in the problems. Those who are able to find the works of God in the sadness. 
They will not call that problem a problem. They will call that problem, ah, this problem is good. Ah, this problem is delicious. Ah, this problem is so joyous. I don't want to name this problem Benoni. I will name this problem Benjamin. Through this problem, God will make me Mungu Through this problem, I will see the works of God. Through this death problem, I will see the glory of God. Through this problem, I will see the mighty hands of God working in my life. Why are you so slow? pole. <laughs> We will see in the midst of the problem, we will see Benjamin. Amen. Amen. I think that's why Elder Benjamin took that name, not Benoni. Everyone, what is a true blessings? Not to have any problems. Habana. Those who has the eyes to see the work of God in the problems. Every time I was in problems, God gave me Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. God gave me Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. God gave me the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. God has given me showed me the works of God in the midst of problems. In the year 2020, <laughs> I guarantee you will have problems. But, I hope all of you can be strengthened in the Lord our God. I finding God in the problems. By finding the works of Jesus in the problems. By finding the promised word of God in the problem. Then I believe that your problems cannot be a problem. Let us all close our eyes and look into our heart and our life. Did I find God in the problem? Why don't you look into your heart? Let us all pray together. Heavenly Father God, as we live our life, we face many problems and many challenges in our life. But Lord, if there is a great difference between people of the world and the people of God, is that to the people of God, in the problem, there is not only the problem, but there is also the works of God in the problems. Lord, bless each and every one of us so that all of us can open the eyes of God so that with that eyes we do not only see the problem, let us all find hope and joy, thankfulness and the works of God in such a problem. Lord, we really would like to rely on you. Lord, teach our brothers and sisters so that their eyes can be open and see the works of God in their life. 
Lord, you may strengthen them so that they can rise and walk again and move forward against the Amalekites. Strengthen the hearts of our brothers and sisters in the midst of problems that they have. Lead them and guide them and protect them, Lord. There's nothing that we can do to lead our life and ourselves. We only rely on you, Lord. We give our life and everything that we belong to, everything that it belongs to us, into your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray it. Amen.